because last time we met, we share where Jesus uh, told his disciples that it is better. It is good from the book of John 16 that he go away. He said, if he don't go away, the comforter will not come. And we are so thankful that that promise had been met. Jesus is a promise keeper. He is the only one that walked the face of the earth and kept every promise he made. And he will continue to keep the promise that he is coming back again. So my brothers and my sisters, buckle up because he's coming back. Because I want to share with you today while he sent the Holy Spirit here with us to keep us, to teach us, and also to convict the world of sin and righteousness and judgment. But Jesus is coming back for a ready church. Are you ready? My friends, my neighbor, are you ready? Are you ready for his coming? I'm looking for his coming. Many may be looking for go meeting him in death, but I'm looking for him in the mid-air. Amen. It would be so good that you and I will not have to go through death like our brothers and our sisters who went through death. But if he shall come or he shall call, let us all be ready. Either which way, come or call, we will be present with him. Amen. Because why? Where is he at this time? Because in the book of Acts, it told, told us and Acts, when Jesus shared with his disciples, he said, Acts 1 and 8, he said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and the uttermost part of the earth. Glory to God. We are the witness today for Jesus. Glory to his name. Verse 9, now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, watch this now, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Great God from Zion. I am so thankful, and I know you too, that God has allowed witnesses to see visually, great God from Zion, with the natural eyes to see Jesus in a bodily form going up until the cloud receive him out of their sight. While the cloud received him out of their sight, they still gaze into heaven. And I don't know how long they were there, but they, I believe they began to reminisce about this great God, this Jesus who raised Lazarus from the dead, give sight to the blind, fed the 5,000, and much more. The same Jesus who now gone up out of their sight, and he, they remember now, he said he is coming again. But they were looking for him to come in their lifetime, but they missed the point, but that's okay. But Jesus is now in heaven. And while they were watching, and verse 10 said, and while they were looking steadfastly towards heaven, that means they were gazing, gazing into heaven. That means their eyes were fixed. Amen. Their eyes and their heart were fixed, looking into heaven. And there were two men in white apparel, great God from Zion. Verse 11 said, who said to them, ye men of Galilee, why do you gaze, stand gazing into heaven? He said, this same Jesus, now watch this now, the same Jesus who went up in bodily form, great God from Zion, what he said, well, so who was taken up, will so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. So the apostles had no doubt where is Jesus. 
He is in heaven. Great God from Zion. He is in heaven. Jesus will come back in a bodily form. Great God from Zion. He is the first bodily man in heaven. Because that is the redemption. He is the redeeming body who went up, who went up to meet the Lord, great God from Zion, and sit at his right hand in heaven. That's the same Jesus in that same bodily form will so come in like manner. Great God from Zion. Watch this now. Watch this. Watch this. This is amazing. He's in heaven. He's in heaven. But watch this. Jesus said to the disciples, he said, look here. All power, all authority is given unto me. Watch this now. In heaven and on earth. Who is the chief here? Who is the champion here? Watch this now. Stay with me for a minute. He said, in heaven and on earth. He said, look here. You will be empowered when the Holy Spirit come upon you. That's why you and I need the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to show you why as time goes on in today, where, why we need the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit uh, will place us in a position with Christ. Are you hearing me? Watch this now. Watch this now. So he said, when I go to heaven, I am going to the one who had sent me. I'm going back to the one who had sent me. As John 16. The father had sent the son. The son now had completed his work. What was his work? Now watch here. And this is what we read earlier with Sister Hill, Hill had read in your hearing. Watch it now. Who being in the form of God, in Philippians 2, 6, who being in the form of God, in the fashion form, in the likeness of God, did not consider a robbery to be equal with God. Ain't that something? Now watch this now. But humble himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant. I want to pause right there. My brothers and my sisters, those who have names, all sorts of names, in the front of their names, in the back of their names, that does not matter. Look what Jesus did. Took on a born servant. A form of a born servant. What is the form of a born servant? A person, watch this now, a person who is born to serve without pay. Uh-oh, I lost some preachers. I lost some pastors. What were you saying? That's why you and I ought to be able to do this work free of charge because you and I took on the form of Christ and we are serving Christ as a born servant. Ain't that something? That's what Jesus did. And came in the likeness of men and being formed in their parents as a man. Watch this now. He humbled himself. I'm going to get back. I'm going to go back of the ascension. Serve with me. He humbled himself and become obedient to the point of death. Ain't that something? He had to submit himself to death. Death was afraid of him because death recognized who he is. The son of God, the only matchless son of God, who have all the power, all the authority. Death had to wait until Christ submitted himself 
to death so death can take over his body. Now watch this now. Death only took over the body because remember, watch this now, on the cross of Calvary, Jesus said to the Father, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. So death couldn't take the spirit of Christ. The spirit was secured in the hands of the Father. Great God from Zion. And when we are in the hands of the Father, no one can pluck us out. Watch this now. So Jesus' body was in the grave. Now watch this now. And on the third day, he rose triumphantly from the grave conquering death, hell, and the grave. That's why when one die in Christ, you and I, we ought to give, give God thanks because why? To be absent, but Paul say, from this body is to be present with the Lord. Now watch this. I'm going to share with you that when we leave this body, we'll be present with the Lord. And I'm going to say something with Jack of your theology. Jack of your theology. And before we leave this body, we are seated in heavenly places. Great God from Zion. Stick with me. We're going to get there. Therefore, watch this now. After the cross, after all the work was done, verse 9, therefore, God also highly exalted him. God the Father exalted Jesus, watch this now, and give him a name which is above every name. Give me a name on earth. Great God from Zion. Demons will run. Give me a name on earth. Things will change when you call that name. There is only one name. Condition will change. Barrels will run. Demons will tremble. Death will back back only at the name of Jesus. Now watch this. He said, give him a name above every name. That at the name of Jesus, our Savior, every knee shall bow. Of those in heaven, watch this now, those on the earth, that's where we are, and those under the earth. Great. What? In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And of those under the earth, all will have to bow to this name. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. And my one line I may use for a topic. God exalted Christ, royalty beyond celebrity status. Many preachers want to be celebrity. How could you be celebrity on this earth using Jesus' name? But listen here, listen here. God exalted Christ God has given him a name. God has given him all the authority. That's what I call all in one. He has the power. He has everything. Everything now is subject to Christ. Now, who else? Who can you think of is subject who can you think of have the name that people will bow on the earth under the earth even in a heaven atmosphere that name is jesus watch this now because god has given him the authority and God has exalted him on his right hand. Watch this now. When God brought Jesus back to heaven, God has given him that name. 
and God had seated him at his right hand. Watch this now. At his right hand. Ephesians, Paul told Ephesians 6 and Ephesians 1 and verse 19, he says, and what is that, what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Watch this now, verse 20. Which he also in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. My God. The power of authority. Listen, would you know the good thing about it? I'm excited that he said the right hand of the Father, having all the power, all the authority, all the glory. And I'm going to share something with you here. Watch this now. Just to confirm it again, out of the mouth of two or three witness, Romans 8, 34. And the last, latter part of the verse says, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. So when you and I go out of track, out of the will, Jesus at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you and I. Ain't that something? Lord, I'll thank you. Thank you, Lord. Watch this now. Because Jesus was exalted and now at the right hand of the Father with great power and with great glory. Watch this. I want you to hear this. Hear this, my brothers and my sisters. Philippians 2 and 9. God, our Father, who sit in heaven, given all the power to his Son, that power the Son have now had passed on to the church. I want to let you know, you and I have that authority in Christ because God had raised us up. Oh God have mercy. Let me read, let me read Ephesians 2 and 4. Let me read this, let me reread it so, you, so you'll agree with me here. In Ephesians 2 and 4 says, but God who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in trespasses made us alive together with Christ. God made us alive together with Christ. Watch this now. Listen. Ephesians 2 and 6 and raise us up together. Listen now. And made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When you and I give our heart to the Lord, watch this now, we move in a different realm. The reason why you and I don't appreciate this much because we look for the natural things. If we can see in this realm in which God places in, then you and I would have been more excited in serving him. But because we are confined to this flesh, we don't see in the spirit we don't see in a realm. We are sometimes discouraged and think we are defeated. But I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, God has raised us up in Christ Jesus. 
and I want to let you know right now, you and I are sitting in heavenly realm in Christ Jesus. My God, have mercy, Lord. Watch this now. So when our eyes shall close in the natural, where would your eyes behold after that milliseconds? Not on earth. Wherever we are seated, that's where we will see the first surroundings we will see, the first person we will see when this physical eye shall close. Well, how is that possible, Moses? Oh, man. Remember, we are serving an eternal God. Nothing is impossible. Jesus was slain from the foundation of the earth before the foundation was laid. And if that can happen, then we can sit, God can sit us in heavenly places even before a body get there. Ain't that something? When we think where God have us, then we will act like kingdom citizens. When we recognize who we are in Christ, then it doesn't matter what the enemy does because we are one because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. And because we are seated in heavenly places, you and I have been exalted by Christ. Ooh, Jesus have mercy. Now watch this. Watch this. Listen, to watch this. We have been made a little lower than the angels. And that's why I always use one liner. Because of Christ. Everything Jesus is, we are. Everything Jesus has is us. Everything we have and is, is because we are in him. Without Christ, we are nothing. Watch this now. And because we are in him, that's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Why? Because Paul knew that he was sitting in heavenly places. That's why when he was locked up in jail and they threw him in prison, he did not mind because he knew where he was. He said, look here, go ahead, do what you want to do with this body. You can only destroy this body, but you can't touch my soul. Great God from Zion. If we can get up to mind like Brother Paul, where this body, hallelujah, my brother, this body going back to Mother Earth, but the soul and spirit going back to God who give it. That's why I said you got to be sitting in heavenly places. We have to ask God to forgive us of our sins before our eyes close. If not, if we have not asked God to forgive us, that means when this eyes shall be open through the spirit and jesus is not our savior we will not be opening our eyes in heavenly places great god from zion i am so excited what you're excited about i'm excited with jesus because i have an opportunity to make him my choice that's why he said Come now, let us reason together. Do your sins be as scarlet. They shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as snow. Great God from Zion, aren't you happy? Man will remember all sorts of things. They will remember the good, they will remember the bad. But one thing I love with the Lord, 
when he wipes our sins away, everything is erased. And he will remember them no more. Watch this. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Making an intercession for you and I. We are seated in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. That's why everything was placed according to Paul's and Ephesians 1, 22, 23. Everything was put under his feet. You have the power. Everything was put under his feet. And give him to be head over all things to the church. So if Jesus is the head. And we are the body. How is it that the body is malfunctioning, not functioning according to how the head is programming to the body? Listen, the body of Christ, where Jesus is the head, and I'm so glad, and I know you too, as a part of his body. Whatever the head say, the body will react. Whatever the head do, the body will do. Whatever the head say, let's go, the body will go. The head doesn't go one way and the body go the other way because we are one. Jesus is our head. He is our king. He is our Lord. He is the master. So let me share this. If Jesus, who left the splendors of heaven, came down in a bodily form as man, condemned sin in the flesh, rose on the tide day, great God from Zion, don't you think he has the power and the authority to channel and to govern his church from here to glory? I'm so excited. And I know you are too. Why? Because he is coming back for his church. One may say, well, knows. I hear that. How do you know he's on the right hand of the Father? Well, that's what the words say. He's at his right hand. Well, nobody have never seen him. Oh, hold on, my brother. Hold on, my sister. There was someone who was on the ice. Great God from Zion. And I am so thankful. Who was on the ice, who lived on the earth. And his name is Stephen. In Acts 5, 55 and 56. But Stephen, full of the Holy Ghost. Notice now, he said, full of the Holy Ghost. Now that's why you and I need to be full of the Holy Ghost so we can see into heavenly things. When we sit in the heavenly realm, we will be able to see heavenly things. So Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, look up to heaven and saw the glory of, oh my God, Stephen saw it before me. And many of us. But you know what? Don't feel bad. We're going to see it too. We're going to see it too. He saw the glory of God. What he says. And Jesus, my God, I feel like shouting here. Standing at the right hand of God. Now, see, this was Stephen's testimony. And God had allowed it for enough life while it was stoning him, life in his body, to say what he see. That's why when one is dying out of this world, moving in the transition from time to eternity, if you hang around, you will hear some things that blow your mind. And if you hear some things that make your heart glad. And if you hear some things that make your heart sad. Because that one have not died in Christ. 
That's why it's best, it's good to sit in heavenly places. That's why it's good to accept Jesus, my brothers and my sisters. It doesn't matter how hard time may be. It doesn't matter how hard life may be. The spouse may go, let the spouse go. The children may go, well, God bless them. Things may seem to be hard, that's all right. Stay with Jesus. He said, I will be with you even to the end of the earth. You want any more comforting than that? And not only that, he said the Holy Spirit is here to comfort us. He is here to comfort us, to teach us, to lead us into all truths. My brothers and my sisters, I don't want you to feel bad. I don't want you to feel like you don't have a friend. There is a friend, greater than a brother, and his name is Jesus. And you can feel the presence of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, let me finish about Stephen. Listen, Stephen, a man just like me and you had a body just like us here on earth, flesh and blood. When he looked, boom, on a third eye, on a third eye, Paul called it the, the eye of the heart. He saw Jesus. Woo, great glory to God, standing at the right hand of God. And verse 56 said, look, he said, I saw heaven open. Oh, great God from Zion. You mean heaven, heaven will open for human? Yes! Because that's why Jesus died. So Stephen could have been saved. Not only Stephen, all of us. And I believe there are some folks who died all alone because of the pandemic, because of the corona. The family members were not able to be around them. But I believe they saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Great God from Zion. And I believe they lift their spiritual hands, though the physical hands may be weak. They will lift their spiritual hands and say, God, here am I. He said, look, I see heaven open. And the son of man, look what Stephen said, the son of man. Luke always referred to Christ as the son of man. Standing at the right hand of God. Don't you want to see where you're going? Before you give your last breath, I sure do. I would like to know. I would like to see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. He's there making an intercession now. But when I pass from death to life, what do you mean death to life? Yes, this body is dying slowly, dying day by day. But our spirit is being renewed day by day. So when I pass from this life, which is full of death and trouble, to life eternal, I want to see my Savior. I want to hear my Savior say, well done, thou good. Woo, glory to God. Not only good, but faithful servant. My God of God address you as good. That means, that means you're good. Watch this now. And this, they cover their ears. And ye, listen now, all these people are something else. Those who are stoning Stephen, instead they listen to hear what he was saying. They scream louder. They cover their ears. Yell at the top of their voices that they all rushed at him. Isn't that something? They don't want to hear it. Just like now, many don't want to hear it. Many don't want to hear Jesus is coming. Oh, that's that's old story. That's old tale. That's why I love those songs. Great God from Zion. Oh, from the glory, from the portals of glory. Jesus is coming. Sing the glad word. 
coming to those who redeemed by his blood, coming to reign as the glorified Lord. Jesus is coming a day. Oh my God, I don't know about you, my brothers and my sisters. Listen, he is coming for a blood washed believers. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Great God from Zion. Jesus stood up when he saw Stephen being stoned. And at the door, when he stands up and walks at the door, he is waiting for his father to give him that clearance. Great God from Zion. To come back on the clouds of glory with the man who testified in Galilee to the disciples. This same Jesus, whom you've seen taken up, will come back again. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you something. There is no sin sweet enough, oh God, that we have to dwell in and dodge in for us to lose a one soul for eternity. None is good enough. None is sweet enough. Great God from Zion, what shall we do? What shall we do, my brothers? What shall we do, my sisters? Says Paul says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. I am so thankful. God has given us the authority. We now exalt it in heavenly places. God has exalted Christ and exalted us. God love us, my brother. For God so loved the world. That's why he allowed his son to come that whosoever, whosoever, doesn't really matter who, believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Great God from Zion. I so love Jesus. I so love the word, my brothers, my sisters. Why not? Because after this life should all be over, then heaven shall surely be worth it all. Paul says, what shall separate me from the love of God? What? What? Nothing on this earth should be that enticing to separate you and I from the love of God. And if you had passed and move on away from the, away from the Lord, I'm going to encourage you to come back on home. He is waiting. He is willing. He said, come now. And that's what the prodigal son did. It's time to come before it be a day too late. When will that be, Knowles? When he should burst the cloud asunder. Paul say for the Thessalonians saints, for the Lord himself, himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Great God from Zion. Who else can do this? Who else can do this? Which other God can do this? Coming with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ, our dead brothers, our dead sons and daughters, our dead uncle, mothers and fathers, they will rise in the newness of life. They will have on their resurrected body, the body where Jesus rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. The glorified body. The immortal body in which Paul talked about. Ain't that something? Where we will ever be with the Lord. He said, comfort one another with these words. I am so thankful and I don't know about you. And I know you are too, that when he comes, when he comes, we will go with him. Those who are ready will go. When he comes, Revelation said, those who will be filthy will be filthy still. He said, behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me to pay every man according as his work shall be. Great God from Zion. A bond servant work without pay. But God is still willing to even reward us for the work we have done. Ain't that something? 
It's going to be a time. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor to enter into the hearts of man what God had prepared for his children. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. My brothers and my sisters, heaven is real. Hell is real. Life is short. Death is sure. Sin is the cause, but Christ is the cure. And I am so thankful. In Luke 16, God has given, Jesus has given us a preview of what's behind the iron curtains of death. Great God from Zion. Great Lord of mercy. When we pass this life, oh Lord of mercy, we will see things. We will know things. We will know persons that we have not seen before. In the book of Luke 16 chapter, and if you read from the verse 19 on to verse 31, it gives us the whole story about Lazarus and the rich man, great God from Zion. The rich man didn't go to hell because he was rich, and Lazarus didn't go to hell because he was poor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are going to be some rich people in heaven who was rich on this earth. A brother, a mother, a father Abraham was rich. God had blessed them with earthly wealth. But when God had blessed us with wealth on this earth, don't take it, my brothers and sisters, and place it to our heart. Wear it as a loose garment. Because nothing in this world we brought in, and certainly nothing we will carry out. My love with this love. This illustration what God, what Christ had given with both the rich man on the earth, Lazarus on the earth. Lazarus died, great God from Zion. And when he opened up his eyes, he was being carried into Abraham's bosom, represent a type of paradise. My brothers and my sisters, you and I are going to open up our eyes in Christ on that morn, that time, on that whether it be a morning, night, or noon, when death shall take a hold of this body and it will become immobilized. But the spirit and the soul moves out. Great God from Zion, Lord, glory to God, and will be ushered in the presence of the Lord. But those who are on the earth, will have to contend with his body, place it back into mother's, mother earth. But after a while, the rich man died, and the Bible say he was buried, and he said, in hell, oh Lord of mercy. Well, that's only a parable, okay. In hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Watch this. And the Bible said, when he opened up his eyes, he saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. How did the world he know that was Abraham? That was before his lifetime. Paul said, we look through a dark glass, we see things in part, we understand them things in part, but then per who is perfect will come. All things in part will be done away with. When we leave this life, we will see Jesus. We will know Jesus. It's a tragedy to see Jesus on your way to hell. It will be a tragedy to see Jesus just looking at you. And because we have not made a decision to accept him, we lose him and he will do nothing for us because we have not asked him while we can in this body to forgive us. Ain't that something? That's why he said now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. If you hear my voice, Jesus said, harden not your heart. Our time is running out. The clock is ticking. Every tick, 
every minute, every hour, every day. Our time is getting closer. So my brothers and my sisters, I want to let you know before a time is expired on this earth, let us make sure that we are seated in heavenly places. Oh my God. If you miss heaven, surely you will catch hell. It's not God's will that any should perish, but all come to repentance. You have to push your way through. I have to push my way through. We all have to push our way through. And while pushing, we have to be careful in what we do. And that's why Paul said, Though I preach the gospel, I myself can be a castaway. My brothers, my sisters, but thank God for Jesus. Thank God. Thank the Lord. He is coming back. And I believe when he gets up to move to the doors of heaven, when the father say, go ahead, my son, bring your church home. What a day that will be. When my Jesus, I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saves me by his grace. When he take me by the hand and lead me through this promised land. What a day. Glorious day. That would be. There are some folks who are going on. I want to see them again. I had a brother and a sister die. That boys. The name is Andy and Jane. I want to see them. They were Jesus. And I know mother you want to see your son too. So let us all be prepared. To go with Jesus. When he comes. Let us be ready. Prepare our hearts. Prepare our souls. Ask him to come in. He's willing to sup with you. He's willing to erase everything that we have done so that we can be with him. Oh, that will be a day. That will be a day. Glorious day. That will be. Father, as we wait on your coming, we pray, Lord, that those who heard the Holy Spirit speaking in that soft voice, those who was discouraged, Lord, and drift away and, and believe that being in you is not waking out it seems to be tougher and harder and harder and harder. But let them know, Lord, that you are bringing through. You are bringing them through, oh God, to sit in heavenly places. Father, in the name of Jesus, I do ask your blessing, Lord, upon everyone who had assigned in on this platform. Everyone who, Lord, will listen to this message, Lord, when it goes on YouTube. Lord, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I pray, Lord, that those will give their heart to you before it be a day too late. Oh, Father, I pray that they will hear the voice of the Master speaking. Oh, Lord, come now. Let us reason together. Oh, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done on earth 
as your will be done in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for protecting us, for forgiving us of all our sins, and you have cleansed us from all unrighteousness. For this, Lord, we say thank you. We thank you because you told us in St. John 14, uh, oh Lord God, you said, oh, you're going to come back. You told your disciples, let not your heart be troubled. You say, you believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Lord, you said, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Father, for this, we want to say thank you. Thank you for Jesus. And Jesus, thank you for asking the Father for sending the Holy Spirit, who's now our teacher, our comforter, one who will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Father, we ask your blessing upon your people as they tune in to your words. These favors we ask in no other name, but in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. It's my prayer.